Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Good afternoon, Howard Wig, Code Green, and I'm with the Hawaii State Energy Office, and we have a distinguished member of the Environmental Committee or community with us today, Steve Joseph, CEO of PVT Landfill Company. Now, I was deeply involved in recycling many, many years ago, and at that time, 8% of all of Oahu's waste was recycled. We are now getting close to 80%, and a large, large portion of that is due to Mr. Joseph and all his efforts with PVT, PVT Land Company since 1989. He's been at it nonstop, improving each and every year, as you will see. So welcome to the program, Mr. Joseph. This is indeed a huge honor. You are an environmental hero. Thank and you. It's uh, great to have you on board. And without further ado, let's bring up the first slide and get right into PVT Landfill. Yeah, we're uh, the largest recycler in the islands. We recycled last year 179,000 tons. So we're essentially, we're the most isolated island chain anywhere in the world when the largest population at over a million. So it's really important that we do a lot of recycling on things. And we handle all the construction demolition debris on the island, and we're also responsible for if there's a tsunami, an earthquake, a hurricane, most of the material that gets blown down in a situation like that would come to us. So, we're about 400 acres in Nanakuli. We're the, one of the largest private employers on that side of the island with over 80 employees. And we do a lot of recycling. We'll recycle wood, metal. It'll show mm -hmm. up in the slides mm -hmm. we've got coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got a lot of questions, but let, let's bring up the next slide and you can move right into it. So we've There's got 80 employees, 80 employees yeah. and that's our recycle line. And most of our employees are from the west side of the island, mm -hmm. which is an area that has historically high unemployment. Mm -hmm. And the other nice thing for our employees, it's a short drive to work instead of having to fight the traffic all the way in town. And let me guess, they make just a shade over minimum wage and have a little bit in the way of benefits. No, not hardly. <laughs> they have, all of them have a 401k, full medical. Mm -hmm. um, we pay uh, right at um, operator's wages mm -hmm. in there. So um, actually, if the union wanted to come in, our employees would have to take a pay cut. Mm -hmm. And we've, for a number of years, given bonuses to all the employees, depending wow. on how things are going. So they like the bonuses. Mm -hmm. And like again, pay. most of the people on the Waianae Coast have to make that huge commute into Honolulu. These guys, it's right in, in their backyard. It's right in their backyard, yeah, short yeah, commute yeah, to work. Because yeah. you're right, that, that drive is, can be an hour and a half drive. Yes, yes. So, yeah, you're doing, I, I would say that just based on that, you're a great, great community uh, uh, member. Th this is the way uh, capitalism should work, in, in my totally unbiased uh, opinion. And up above, if we could bring that slide back, you referred to a piece of machinery. That yeah, that's, what, what is that thing? That's our sort line. I've mm -hmm. got another picture of it later oh, on. Oh, we do? In here. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. that yeah. shows them when they're picking. Mm -hmm. Maybe the next yeah. one. Okay, well, let's move to, to the next. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is our, what's happening with leads. This is the environmental one that, um, where you can get platinum, gold, silver. So depending on how much material you recycle out of any construction project, this is how your green uh, building code 
gets determined whether you make it. And you can pick up two to four percent, two to four points for the amount of recycling you can do. And you can see in this diagram the amount of recycling for lead credit is going up tremendously. And let, let me point out that LEAD stands for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. It's a voluntary mm -hmm. program undertaken by, well, both by government entities and by the private sector. A lot of Waikiki hotels, I know, for instance, voluntarily participate in LEAD. And I guess this credit would go to whom? The, the building The owners? builder or the whoever is mm -hmm. building the project out. And it's very prestigious, and generally, when you're in a, <clears throat> a lead building, the rents are higher and the occupancy rates are, are higher. It's a, it's a real feather, environmental feather in your cap when, when you are a good lead participant. Yeah, because it means you're doing everything right, including mm -hmm. your amount of power you're using. A lot of times the windows will be double pane. Mm -hmm. How you're doing everything in the building, including, in our case, the construction of yeah. it. Yeah. So, what we did, because when this started out years ago, the big problem for any of the projects on, on our island is mm -hmm. that the footprint where you're going to build this is really small. So it's really hard to have five or six different bins out there. Mm -hmm. Even Disney, who built a very large project, had trouble, and they had a big footprint with the bins. And then the problem is everybody here isn't used to putting certain things in a certain mm -hmm, bin. Mm -hmm. So the problem was they had to have somebody sit out there to make sure the metal went in the right bin, that the wood went into the right bin. So what finally happened is we told them, you just put everything in one bin, we'll sort it out for you, mm -hmm. and then we'll tell you how much of each type of material got recycled. Mm -hmm. So it became very easy for them to do. Now, why didn't this material just go to H-Power, our garbage to energy plant? That doesn't qualify for lead credit mm -hmm. on it. So it's the kind of things we do, the amount of metal recycling. And then the wood, which goes out either for gasification to make power or hydrogen or fuel, or goes out for anaerobic digestion. And that in turn can make gas for the gas company. I know BYU on the east side of the island has got some projects they're working on as well. So this is a much higher and better use of this material than just tossing it into the H-Power furnace and uh, making electricity with it. Yeah, that's the problem. LEED won't give you credit for that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this will qualify for credit. Wow, that is impressive. You're going to make hydrogen and... All kinds of gas. You, you can mm -hmm. make uh, methane. You can make different types of gas. And then that can be converted over to actually a liquid fuel or it can be used. Hydrogen is really the thing that on the island yeah. here we're short yeah. of mm -hmm. because the refinery needs it because almost everything requires hydrogen. That's the one mm -hmm. thing they're short of. And then for wow. the gas company, anaerobic digestion produces a very large amount of methane, which is the gas yep. they want yep. for us to be able to use mm. when you turn on the gas. That is really, really remarkable. Let's go to the next slide, please. This keeps getting better and better here. Yeah, we got the Excellence <laughs> in Landfill Management Award from SWANA. SWANA is the Solid Waste Association in North America. So we got the gold, which is the top award. Mm -hmm. We got uh, two silvers, one in recycling, the other mm -hmm. one handling special waste. So, uh, and I think there's two or three more that we're going to be able to get. Now, this is national. This national. is not, not just Hawaii. Ah. Did, did you actually travel to somewhere to receive the awards? Or? Yeah, we were in Nashville to receive it. And this happened right before Lane was due to <laughs> come in. So we flew back for Lane and got here just before it came in. And because we're part of the debris management part That's of the right. island. That's right. So... Um, the city has DRC, which is their management company, comes in to handle the debris. Essentially, the city and city employees are going to be working to get infrastructure back up. Mm -hmm. They don't, won't have the people to do the cleanup for roads and hauling out a lot of the debris that gets scattered all over mm -hmm. the place. So their management team coordinates with truckers, equipment operators, and us to make sure we're all set to go, that everybody knows what they need to do, 
And then in order to get paid by FEMA, you have to make sure you have all the paperwork. Mm -hmm. And so their mm -hmm. debris management company makes sure that the city gets paid and then in turn the city pays us. Yeah, and so, FEMA is, is a national organization, Federal Energy Management Agency. Mm -hmm. And I happen to know from other tales, they are really, really strict on the paperwork. Yeah. So you have to have paperwork guys right on, on the site there. Yeah, and their main yeah. goal is to make sure that the debris doesn't just get landfill. Mm -hmm. Their goal is mm -hmm. to make sure that as much as possible gets recycled, which is a really good goal. Yeah. I know you yeah. and I care about Absolutely. that. Absolutely, yep, yep. So you, in, in a post-emergency or post-disaster, you would just get truckload after truckload after truckload of stuff coming in there. And we could, if we got hit, I also was on the disaster planning committee back mm -hmm. in 06. And we could, from a category four, we could get 430,000 tons of debris overnight, literally, Good if Lord. we got hit with a category four. So this four. would just be a carav nonstop caravan of trucks coming in. There. Yeah. yeah, the cleanup would just be massive. Mm -hmm. And it would, would it be mostly fallen trees that have been it, cut up? Or it'll be trees, mm -hmm. houses, everything else. Mm -hmm. The things that would go to Waimanalo Gulch or H Power would be organic kinds of things, mm -hmm. an animal that got killed, something else that would be what you would call municipal solid waste. Mm -hmm. And we'd handle any of the debris, and I mean, it can be anything from solar panels to whatever gets blown off, yeah. roofing material. Hmm. I just can't begin to tell you the amount of stuff that can end up I flying. Can imagine, we, yeah. When Lane came in, we got hit with 80 mile an hour winds on our side of the island, mm -hmm. and it ripped 15 solar panels off of our solar array out there and drove one of them right through a pickup truck door. So, I mean, you do not want to be out in an 80 mile an hour wind. Hmm. And that, that'll teach you in the future to really, really bolt down those solar panels. We've just gone through and reinforced them. Yeah. Oh, wow. It actually, it actually sucked a window out of our van, the square windows that are in the mm -hmm. doors. Mm -hmm. The window wasn't inside and it wasn't on the ground. It was just gone. It had sucked it right out of the van. That's we have no a, idea where it went that's to. That's a lot of pressure building up there. Yeah, well, let's, let's uh, go to the next slide. This is, keeps getting better and better here. So this is what you uh, receive. Yeah. Yeah. Th this is the kind of material we get. Um, mm -hmm. 330,000 tons annually. And you kind of see the metal, the amount of wood, concrete. So we, con we recycle concrete, asphalt. Any of the wood goes out for feedstock. We take in a certain amount of coal ash from the AES, mm -hmm. and then the metals, mm -hmm. and then dirt. On projects where we've had uh, cleanups mm -hmm. from spills or that kind of thing, we'll take in all of that dirt. Because our facility is lined, we're approved mm -hmm. to handle a lot of stuff. What do you do with the coal ash? The coal ash actually serves a very useful purpose for it. It acts as a barrier in there, it also acts, uh, we put it in when we put in the lining, mm -hmm. we put in the coal ash because it acts like a drain layer and it doesn't break down. Mm -hmm. So it has the same porosity as beach sand. Yeah. So if you yeah. put it out anywhere, and it gets hard, but it has that kind of porosity. Mm -hmm. So we use it as part of a drain layer in the landfill. Wow. So well, we use just about everything yeah, we can. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so, so impressive. So we do need to take a break. Howard Wig, Code Green, with Steve Joseph, CEO of PVT Landfill, back in a moment. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, inviting you to come visit with us on Cannabis Chronicles, a 10,000-year odyssey, where we explore and examine the plant that the muse has given us. And stay with us as we explore all of the facets of this planet on Wednesdays at noon. Please join us. Aloha. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea is on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join me, where my guests 
talk about law topics and ideas and music and Hawaiiana all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. Good afternoon again, Howard Wig, Code Green, and I represent the Hawaii State Energy Office. Very, very distinguished guest with us today, Steve Joseph, who I have just learned I elevated in stature. He's the vice president, not the CEO of PVT Landfill, but given his legend, he is CEO to everybody and everything but the initials in back of him. So honored to have you on board here, Mr. Yeah. Joseph. Let's go to the next slide. Each, each one is so fascinating. Oops, that's... Yeah, oh, this, oh, is no. a, okay. this is a good one. Shows mm -hmm. uh, we have so we put in solar to power our office initially. Mm -hmm. So it powers... Um, a big portion of all of our office facility in there. But we have plans to put in 1,440 panels to power that recycling. Uh, the part you saw in the back and with the employees in front of it, that whole recycling facility, we intend to power that with solar too, wow. just to kind of take us off the grid. Mm -hmm. One, it saves financially. The other thing is we don't burden the utility. Precisely, and I noticed that uh, a lot of those panels are over parking garages, yep. and it gets pretty dang hot out there, oh. so those cars are a lot happier in the shade. Oh, they are. Yep. Our employees like that covered <laughs> parking a lot. And then if you put panels over your regular building, you have shaded now the roof of the building, so it has virtually zero solar heat gain. Boom, your air conditioning load goes down. Yep. Hmm. And you are remembering that there are certain tax credits for. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. Just yes. Wanted to make sure you get in there. and. Uh... Yeah. But our real goal is mm -hmm. with this, the goal we have to put in 1,440 panels mm -hmm. is really to power the equipment that we have out there right now, which I, mm -hmm. you know, it's a real good goal to being absolutely, green. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, irregardless of the credits we get for it, so, we think so that that's the way to go. This would involve your e including storage with yeah. the panels then, yeah. Yes, we'd so have you, some you battery can... storage in there. Mm -hmm. So right now, uh, our whole switching equipment is all set to take it. Though it did take me two years to get a permit and get it installed, but mm -hmm. it has the ability to turn HECO off and go strictly on the battery mm -hmm. and solar panels when we get them installed. Well, just a, a good news item. Uh, we, I chair the Hawaii Building Code Council, and just two meetings ago, we adopted the 2017 NEC, National Electrical Code, which has four chapters on storage. All so right. in your application to the city for the storage, you just need to say, we are complying with 2017 NEC, and your permitting, I certainly can't guarantee it, but your permitting process should be vastly sped up because this assures the plan checkers that you are specifying and citing the storage facilities properly. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So on that cheery note, let's go to the next slide. So we're using solar as well to power some of our equipment on here, our groundwater monitoring, our leachate collection, a lot of things that we do, because they're kind of isolated, it's away mm -hmm. from everything, mm -hmm. we've found that we can power it with um, solar. So we've used it, we also have 36 cameras on site, and we power a number of those cameras off solar as well, because they're isolated in positions where there's no power to what, them. What do you need the cameras for? Well, the cameras we use on site to both protect the site and so that we know what's going on all over the site. We have some PTZ cameras, because we have a lot of copper, and people uh, like to come in and uh, yes, yes, take yes. the copper. Or the other thing they seem to like is those big deep cycle batteries in the mm -hmm, heavy equipment, because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I guess they make excellent boat batteries. Mm -hmm. So I think we found one of them one time shortly after it left out at Waianae Boat Harbor. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> yeah. And you mentioned uh, leachate. That's not uh, the subject of much cocktail party discussion. What in the world is leachate? But leachate is the water that moves through the trash and then gets mm -hmm. collected in the liner portion. And somebody asked me one time, how would we know if anything leaked out? And I told them, I said, if groundwater suddenly improved, mm -hmm. because our leachate is cleaner than the groundwater underlying the site. Because when it comes through, we don't have anything that adds bad things to it. Mm -hmm. So it comes through, it starts out as rainwater and it ends up in the bottom as uh, slightly affected rainwater. Mm -hmm. And you basically just uh, put it in these containers and then it evaporates? Is that no, we no? use it, uh, because it's so uh, clean, mm -hmm. we use it and have approval from the state to use it for dust control on site. So, and then as the landfill has built up and as, you know, as we close parts of it, then there actually won't be any leachate because the rain doesn't get through on it. And we don't have anything in the waste that actually generates water. Uh, you know, water is generally uh, from the breakdown of organics. Mm -hmm. And the closest thing we have to organics is wood and it mm -hmm. basically doesn't break down. Yep, yep. Hmm. Let's go to the next slide. So this is, we put almost $4 million in our recycling equipment. That's the upper photo and the bottom one. So we get about 2,000 tons of trash a day, and roughly 80% of that gets recycled, goes through our equipment. The other thing we're recycling is we're digging up 4 million cubic yards out of the old landfill, the oldest part, and recycling it as well. Hmm. Because all the wood in there, which makes up almost 50 or 60% of the material, can go out for power generation or to make gas for the gas company or anything mm -hmm. like that. So you are actually decreasing the volume of uh, waste that sits under Oahu soil then? Yes, yeah. we are. Hmm. It's getting recycled. And rather crucial, since we just happen to be on an island, yeah. This isolated, and people ask me, they go, do you think you'd ever dig it up again? Well, if there was something in there that suddenly was worth doing it, we'd probably mm -hmm. dig it up again. <laughs> and uh, sensing equipment is getting so good that you could put some kind of uh, vibration down there and say that's, well, I, I guess you recycle the metal, so that wouldn't be metal yeah. under there, but that's this material, that's this material, that's this material. Yeah, because the things that get uh, end up going into the landfill are things like carpeting and wood shingles off your roof or the tar mm -hmm. paper because nobody wants to take mm -hmm. those currently. And, you know, uh, uh, drywall, the mm -hmm. chipboard, nobody wants to take that yeah. currently. Yep. So it's, you know, literally 80% that we can able to recycle. Beautiful. On that cherry note, let's go to the next slide. Oh, this is part of our operations. This is a four-year project that we're working on now, which is going to take four million cubic yards and recycle it out. So, I mean, this has been a project, and it, it, the, most of it's going to be the wood that goes out for energy production. We get a lot of concrete that gets crushed and reused. Uh, how, how can crushed, crushed concrete be reused? Oh, you'll love this one. We use it for the roads on site and for a lot of other applications, but one of the things that it's useful for, any place where you can't make a ground penetration for a solar panel, mm -hmm. um, the, what you can do is you put together, a, essentially it's an expanded metal box, fill it with recycled concrete and then mount the solar panels on top of it. Mm. And that way you can put it on the ground and you don't do a ground penetration. What would be wrong with the ground penetration? Well, like for us, on our landfill, mm -hmm. the way the, the, our, all of our requirements read, we can't do a ground penetration through the top deck when we're done. Uh -huh. So it's it got a final cap on it. Mm -hmm. So this way we can mount all those solar panels on portions of the landfill we've closed without doing a ground mm -hmm. penetration. Now, could you sell some of the crushed concrete either to the state or the city for, for their building roads? Or Yes, yeah, yeah there, that is also one of the applications. 
I mean, basically the, the way we work, we try and not compete with our customers and guys like West Wahoo and a number of other ones, uh, great specific for crushing concrete for reuse in different areas. So point, yeah. we're actually looking at markets and putting it into markets that they don't currently handle and can't. So, you know, our philosophy always is there's room for everybody to make a living mm -hmm. on the island. And that's kind of the basic on how we work. And can you crush it to any size the customer might need? The six inch blocks, two inch blocks, uh, yeah. smaller than that? To everything, including mm -hmm. sand size. Mm -hmm. So it depends on what they want. Normally somewhere around the four to six inch crush allows you to get all the rebar out, which then gets recycled out mm -hmm. for metal. Mm -hmm. That normally is an optimum for getting rebar out. And rebar makes pretty good metal. Last oh, yeah. time I looked, yeah, yeah. Let's look at the uh, next slide. Oh yeah, this is some of the stuff we do. We have drones that we fly on the landfill. We use it for monitoring the landfill, both to see how our fill is going in and also to make sure that we don't develop a hot spot anywhere in there. Uh, and so even, even the fire department because that's one of the problems they've had with fires, like the fire they had in Makakilo. Mm -hmm. The areas that are so isolated like that, it's hard to identify residual hotspots after the fire, and then what happened up in Makakilo, it kept blowing up again because of the wind. So with something like the drone, and they, you know, they wanted to come out and take a look mm -hmm. at how we're doing with it, wow. but that would allow them to be real specific to get those spots that you know, you don't see right away. Yeah, you come over yeah, with an yeah, infrared yeah. camera and mm. you can see them. We have got a very short time. Is there one last slide left? Oh, uh, this is this uh, is the heavy equipment. We have oh. the first and only electric bulldozer on the islands. Beautiful. And so it uses about half the diesel and it'll push as much as a larger bulldozer will. So the ease of operation, the fact that really electric, this has more power than a bigger machine, so it really works well. And then we have a compactor which is GPS controlled so that it can set the blade to push out at a certain mm -hmm. thickness and then it runs over it and by looking at the screen they can tell how many times they ran over it. So they got to make three passes on it. Four, you're doing too much. Two, you're not doing enough. Wow. Hmm. Well, we had more to cover, but the all good things must come to an end. Thank you so much, Mr. Joseph, almost CEO of PVT <laughs> Landfill. This has been very fascinating, and you definitely fulfilled my expectations that I don't think anybody, any single entity is doing as much for the environment as PVT Landfill. It's an honor to have you here. This Thank is you. Howard Wig, Code Green, State Energy Office. See you next time.